and welcome to our next section. Our first tutorial will have the objective we will start to memorize the basic trig identities. So we are in section 5.3 in our textbooks and we're going to be looking at the basic identities. Um, these are the ones that we're going to be using more often than the other ones. First I need to explain to you what an identity is. An identity is not an equation. An equation is something like x plus 2 equals to 8. This is obviously dependent on what x is. x can only be one number, and that is, of course, 6. This is not an identity. An identity is something like x plus 2 is equal to 2 plus x. An identity is something that's true for every value of the variable. This is actually an example of the commutative property, and whatever x is, x can be any number. x plus 2 and 2 plus x will always be the same thing. So that's an example of an identity. When we're talking about trigonometric identities, we're talking about um, these will always be true for all values of our angle, every value of theta. Okay, We're going to be uh, memorizing well over 30 of these identities and a lot of things, so you really need to get on your flashcards as soon as possible. You should start your flashcards. Um, you get, get some 3 by 5s uh, maybe even cut them in half because they don't need to be that big, um, but you really want to start making your flashcards so you can start memorizing these. Okay, um, maybe bring some of them to class. There's going to be a nice incentive for those who make their flashcards and start studying them from day one, which is now. So let's look at our first six of the basic trig identities, the reciprocal identities. The reciprocal identities you probably already know, um, that's why we call them basic, uh, the sine of theta, and I'm just choosing to use uh, theta. You can use an alpha or a beta or even an x. The sine of theta is equal to one divided by the cosecant of theta because sine and cosecant are reciprocals. The cosine of theta is equal to one divided by the secant of theta because cosine and secant are reciprocals. The tangent of theta is equal to one divided by the cotangent of theta because tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. The cosecant of theta is one divided by the sine of theta because if the sine and cosecant are reciprocals, well, that would mean that the cosecant and sine are reciprocals as well. So secant is equal to 1 divided by the cosine, and cotangent is equal to 1 divided by the tangent. So these are the first six of our trig identities, and they are called the reciprocal identities. I think they're pretty basic. I want you to make six flashcards. The front of each of the flashcards will be the left part of each of these identities, and when you flip it over, the back of the flashcard will have what it's equal to on the back. If you'd like to label each one of the cards as reciprocal, that might make sense. So you can, you know, if you happen to fall, you know, drop them all over the floor, you can still put them in order if you want to. So those are the six reciprocal identities. Now let's look at the two quotient identities. The two quotient identities, I would just call them um, maybe better names for tangent and cotangent. The tangent is equal to the sine divided by the cosine. I believe we wrote that down earlier. And possibly a better name for the cotangent. Rather than talking about one over the tangent in terms of a reciprocal, uh, we can say that it's the cosine over the sine. So those are the two quotient identities. Maybe just better names for the tangent and the cotangent using a quotient of the sines and cosines. So tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent is cosine over sine. We have five more that I'd like to look at today and they are the five Pythagoreans. We use these very often. But before we actually get to those five, I'd like to explain where they come from. So let's explore the equation of our unit circle. First of all, let's review um, circles. The standard form for any circle is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to the radius squared. Well, if we're writing the equation of our unit circle, h and k are both 0 because our unit circle starts at the origin. 
the center is 0, 0. So this simply becomes x squared, and this becomes y squared. The radius of the unit circle is always going to be 1, so this becomes 1 squared, which is 1. That's the equation of the unit circle. And we could flip the two uh, terms around to y squared plus x squared is equal to 1. It really doesn't matter. But that's the equation of the unit circle. So our first Pythagorean identity involves this equation of the unit circle. The y-coordinate of the unit circle is the sine. So that's why sine squared of theta plus the x-coordinate, which is cosine, cosine squared theta will always be equal to 1. And that's our main Pythagorean identity, that the sine squared plus the cosine squared will always equal to 1. Let's talk a little bit about this symbol, for example, this cosine squared, what that means. <clears throat> cosine squared of theta, that means you're taking your cosine value and squaring it. That's what that means. We Instead of having to write the parentheses, though, every time, we just put the little squared um, right after the, co the COS part of that symbol. This does not mean cosine of theta squared. That would be squaring an angle and then taking the cosine of it. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about squaring the cosine value. Okay, so we write that symbol like this, cosine squared of theta. Okay, so this is the main Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. All four of the other ones come directly from this equation. So the first two are really just manipulations of this equation. Well, all four of them are, I guess. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract cosine squared from both sides. If I subtract cosine squared over to here, I'll have 1 minus cosine squared. And if I subtract the cosine squared over to here and get 1 minus cosine squared, that will always be equal to sine squared. Really, I'm just moving some pieces around. So that's another one. And for the same reasoning, instead of, it, let's keep the cosine squared by itself, let's subtract sine squared over to the other side, and I'm going to have 1 minus sine squared, and of course that would always be equal to cosine squared. I like to think of these as two separate Pythagoreans. The book will only say that there's three Pythagoreans. I like to think of them as five, and these are two that I include, because we see this so often. We're going to be replacing one minus cosine squared with a sine squared, or we're going to be replacing a one minus sine squared with a cosine squared. We use them so often that might as well just make two more flashcards for them. So here are three of the Pythagorean identities. The other two come from taking our original equation, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, and dividing all three parts by sine squared, and then dividing all three parts by cosine squared. So let's imagine that we're dividing first by sine squared. If I divide sine squared by sine squared, of course I get 1, and then a plus sign. If I take cosine squared and divide by sine squared, cosine squared divided by sine squared becomes cotangent squared. And then if I take the 1 and divide by sine squared, 1 divided by sine squared becomes cosecant squared. This is another one of our Pythagorean identities. And then our last one is found a very similar way. We divided everything by sine squared to get this one. Now let's divide everything by cosine squared. If I take sine squared and divide by cosine squared, then I'm going to have tangent squared and then a plus sign. If I take cosine squared and divide by cosine squared, of course I get a 1. And if I take 1 and divide by cosine squared, 1 divided by cosine squared becomes secant squared. This is our fifth Pythagorean identity. And this is all five of our Pythagorean identities. If I may say so, I believe the reciprocals that you've probably already memorized. I'm pretty sure the quotients you've probably already memorized. So it's really these five that you need to start focusing on. Make flashcards for all uh, 13 of these, of course, but these are the ones that are most likely brand new to you.
Okay. These last two in particular took me a while until I started seeing things that would help me to memorize them. One thing that I see is that the plus sign is on the same side with the T. And it's nice because a T looks like a plus sign. That's always been helpful to me. That always means that I've got cotangent squared plus 1 and tangent squared plus 1. The plus is on the same side with the T. So that's helpful. I know that the plus is with the T. And then in, in this one, it might seem silly, but I see co-co. I see cotangent and cosecant. Co-co. I know there's other co's, but that kind of helps me. Cotangent, cosecant, uh, co-co. Okay. So you're going to come up with the ways, and flashcards is definitely going to be able to help you. Let's use some of these. This is just basic stuff right now. We're going to get into this uh, in more detail in a later chapter, um, actually in the next chapter. But um, right now, we're just going to be using them to see what, what we can do with them. It's really just about replacement. Find the exact value. We're not plugging these into calculators right now. I don't know what the tangent of 20 degrees is. It's not one of our special angles, but that doesn't matter. What I can do is say, you know what, I know that the sine of 20 degrees divided by the cosine of 20 degrees, there's a Pythag excuse me, there's an identity that says what this is equal to. This is one of our quotient identities. And I can use a quotient identity to say that the sine divided by the cosine is equal to the tangent. And then I'll have the tangent of 20 degrees take away the tangent of 20 degrees. Well, wait a minute, that's just the same number, whatever this is, take away the same number. Wouldn't that just be zero? So I'm using a quotient identity to transform what this looks like into something that it's equivalent to. Sine of 20 divided by cosine of 20 equals tangent of 20. And then I can subtract. Over here on the second one, I see this second part right here. That looks to me like I can be using a reciprocal identity. And I know that 1 over the secant, I know that 1 over the secant is equal to cosine. So 1 over the secant squared should be equal to cosine squared of pi over 12, whatever pi over 12 is. I don't, it's not one of our special angles, but that's not needed right now. This is a reciprocal identity that says 1 over the secant squared can become the cosine squared. And then I've got this original sine squared of pi over 12. And then I'm adding cosine squared. So now I need to see what this is equal to. Ooh, I remember this. That's the main Pythagorean. I love seeing sine squared plus cosine squared. As long as I'm dealing with the same angle, I know that this is a Pythagorean. And that sine squared plus cosine squared will always equal to 1. So right now, it's just going to be some basic substitution from memory, those 13 identities. So please, again, make your flashcards, or at least bring some 3 by 5 note cards to class, and we can start making them in class. It's going to really help your brain if you start seeing them on a daily basis through flashcards. Thanks for watching.